Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Want to make a podcast? Spotify has got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify as well as Q&A polls to take conversations with your fans to the next level. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I'm personally getting a lot out of Spotify for Podcasters, and I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. I mean, gosh, oh, come on now, honey. Oh, yes, for some of you who might have guessed, that was a reference to Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage being his Nicolas Cageist. For those of you who got it, you are truly the few, the proud, the old. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's not that old. Come on. It's from 87. Coen Brothers movie, Holly Hunter, Nick Cage... Francis McDormand, uh, John Goodman, screaming throughout the whole movie. Oh my God, it's so good. My wife and I just rewatched it last night and it got me kind of, I don't know, inspired. It's so good. You know, some movies you watch them again and you're like, ah, you know what, that didn't hold up or something was nostalgic and you can be like, ah, it was nostalgic. But if I was watching that for the first time right now, it really wouldn't hold up. Well, Raising Arizona holds up. If you haven't seen it, Go back and see it. It's so funny. It's so fierce. It's so energetic. It has so much just like, I don't know. It's, just, it's like, it's invigorating. I don't know. Nicolas Cage is great. He's, Holly Hunter is amazing too. But Nicolas Cage is just like no holds barred. His hair is all over the place. His, you know, uh, his, his voice is all over the place. His, his facial expressions are all over the place. It's just fun to watch. And it's so well written. And some of the, you know, the shots, the cinematography is just like, Man, it's still innovative. You could tell they didn't do it with a huge budget, but they did it with so much pizzazz, you know, and that really shines through still. So what does that have to do with today? Uh, Well, it has everything to do with today. But first, let me pause for a second and just I want to say thank you to two magazines that I was featured in recently. One of them is Artgasm online magazine. Uh, It's a new art platform online, and they did a feature on me. And the second one is Canvas Rebel magazine, and that's online. You can read that as well. They did an interview on me, an exclusive, and uh, very happy, very honored, very thrilled to be a part of both of these. You can check them out on my website, pmsartwork.com forward slash press, uh, where all my press articles are. Check it out and read them if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. Be cool, my baby. I'm mad at you. But so what does that have to do with anything, the whole Raising Arizona? Oh, by the way, I forgot the score. This like great banjo-y kind of hillbilly score. It's so good. Anyway, it got me jazzed. And 
I started thinking about, you know, just the flavor of the movie in general and just the energy that went into that, that, that shines through. All the characters, Francis McDormand, Holly Hunter, uh, Nicolas Cage, John Goodman, they all just really are just letting loose and letting go throughout the whole movie. And I just thought that that was really, I don't know, I was, I was struck by how kind of brave it was and how they must have just really been into the script and just said like, you know what, I don't care if this looks bad. I don't care if I look bad. I don't care <laughs> if this is weird. I'm just going to go for it. And it reminded me of a lot of things now in the art world and how curated things are on uh, Instagram and all social media and just the internet in general. We're all curating ourselves. We are trying to put filters on our stuff. We're rehearsing stuff. We're trying to, you know, show just the highlight reel, all of us, you know, in our best form. Uh, And it's really hard to live up to that, first of all, and to really feel like that's actually genuine. I think a lot of people see through that nowadays. They go, okay, yeah, this is the highlight reel, but really what's going on behind the scenes when this person's not doing well or, um, you know, just creating in the studio. So I wanted to take some of the energy from that movie and some of those performances and use it as an inspiration for us and as a model for us to not hold back in our careers. And what does that mean? I don't mean just to not hold back with, you know, getting your stuff out there and pounding the pavement, trying to get into galleries or trying to get into online art marketplaces or get people into your studio. Yeah, that's part of it too. But I really want to challenge you to not hold back in being yourself and like showing these sides of yourself that are so unique to you. Like if you need inspiration, go watch Raising Arizona, watch Nicolas Cage's performance, watch Holly Hunter's, watch everybody's Francis McDormand. You'll see how much they're just letting loose and letting you see everything, scars and warts and all. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's like really, it's not ugly. It's actually fascinating and it's energetic and it's wild and it's entertaining. Um, I would challenge you to incorporate some of this into how you, not how you present yourself, but how you just allow yourself to be yourself, be the most of yourself, sharing your story, sharing your process, sharing your energy, sharing your sense of humor, whatever it is that makes you you and that makes you unique and makes you different from other people, show that. Don't be so worried about coming across as perfect because you know what? I think people are getting tired of that. And I think I love it when I see authenticity. I love it when I see somebody really just exposing themselves in their studio. It's not like the lighting's not set up perfectly. It's more just like, it's like you're getting a voyeuristic window into their process. I like that. Now we have to curate a little bit for social media just because you have to see, you know, you're competing with a lot of people, but I think if you can do that with a flavor that is very unique to you and an authenticity, I think it'll make you stand out. It doesn't mean you have to do, you know, oh, I'm doing a reel. So let me find the most popular reels out there and find the formats that they're using and then try to adopt to that. No, find something that's unique to you. When I'm doing mine, for example, and I've actually gotten compliments on this from multiple people, I have like a very cinematic eye because I grew up in movie theaters. I grew up watching movies. I love movies. I was an actor, you know, but also like music videos. There's a very kind of cinematic, almost music video feel to my reels. And they're not like super over the top, lots of special effects, but I find ways to do cuts and weird things and even like little tricks, like trick photography stuff that makes it unique to me and to, you know, my cinematic eye, stuff that I'm really inspired by from the past. I try to incorporate that into that because that is me. That's part of me. And I think it really showcases who I am as an artist and my creativity in general. And also it showcases the art as well. But if you want to you know, get a feel for that, just go to my Instagram at PMS Artwork and look at some of my past reels. And I think you'll get an idea for what I'm saying. You'll see it's not like super polished and whatnot. It's more like raw and cinematic, like I said. So that's what I am doing. And uh, how can you incorporate a little bit more of yourself and your own energy and your own flair and your own razzmatazz. I say there, uh, honey, say boys. Oh, uh, yeah, and we got to work on my Nicolas Cage. That's a very specific cage, but it's so much fun. Anyway, how can you do that? How can you show yourself and not be afraid and be a little fearless in what you're showing to the world and in your own work, too? That's the other side of this that I wanted to say. I think a lot of people are so into checking out other people's work these days. Like we used to do that, you know, you used to go to a museum or you'd go to a gallery event or you'd go to somebody's studio and you'd see the work for a very brief period of time and you might get a little bit of a, 
you know, a jolt or an energy buzz and, and some inspiration. You might take that and like chew it as you're on your way home and like, go, okay, how can I like use this inspiration and put it into my own thing? Now people just look at their phone, they take screenshots, they're kind of try to, you know, emulate what other people are doing. And I think sometimes that can make it a little bit cold. Uh, I think it's more about the feeling that it makes you feel, the inspiration, and then bringing it into your own studio, filtering it through your own experience, through your own essence of who you are, and then putting that out there and having it truly be your own. I think that's something that is a little bit lacking nowadays. And I think if we can do that, it's almost like an energy or inspiration forward approach, not like a, how can I curate this? How can I how can I try to emulate this piece that I like and make it almost exactly the same and make it more like cookie cutter? I think that's uh, something we're seeing a lot of now. And it's okay to be inspired by artists. Everybody's inspired by everybody else. Like there's so many people who are inspired by, you know, the Pollocks, the Rothkos, the Frida Kahlo's, the Basquiat's of the world, all these people. There's so many people that are inspired by that. But it's all about taking that energy and then making your own and then being authentic with your own experience. Like I'm authentic with my own past experience, like my trauma, my darkness into light, my drinking, my emotions, all that stuff, all that darkness that I kind of filter in through and, and uh, exercise it out on the canvas and then the chronic pain and stuff like that. I try to be very bold and I try to be very unfiltered with that. And I think hopefully that shows in my work. And that's what I'm interested in doing. So is this about raising Arizona? Well, it is and it isn't. It's exactly what I'm telling you right now. It's taking the inspiration that I felt from watching this movie last night. Like I still woke up today with a little bit of buzz from it and it's taking that and now I'm filtering it in through my own experience and putting it out there in podcast form and we're talking about something different. But I think that energy and inspiration shines through. So hopefully this is something that resonates with you a little bit. You know, what can you take and what can you be inspired by and how can you be more authentic? How can you kind of tap in to your energy source and you know, show that to people in the most authentic way, whether that's on social media, in the studio, or in your interactions out in the art world. That's something we need to think about and stew on. And if you need a little bit of jolt and shot of inspiration, watch Raising Arizona. It's fun. It's just, you know, it's just fun. You're going to have a good time with it. Even if you don't get the inspiration I got, you'll have uh, an enjoyable hour and a half of watching a great movie. So that's it for today, everybody. Hope you liked it. I look forward to bringing you more episodes coming up soon. Interviews coming up shortly, I promise. Uh, but in the meantime, it's just been fun kind of connecting and sharing these solo episodes. Hope you're doing well out there. Be creative. Be good to each other. Oh, oh, and I hear my, I hear my outro music, boys. Take care of yourselves. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.